here, welcome back to my channel. And if this is your first time watching my video, hi, I'm Kay Young and I'm a third year medical student in Canada. I recently finished my rotation in plastic surgery and I absolutely loved it. So I just wanted to make a video to share my experience and tell you guys what I learned. So when you think about plastic surgery, the first thing that comes to your mind might be cosmetic plastic surgery. That can be breast augmentation, tummy tuck, or facelift, etc. And that's because that's what we're most exposed to through media. However, plastic surgery as a specialty is so much more than that. It's very diverse and you can operate on almost any part of the body. In my rotation, I had a mix of minor ORs and major ORs. So in minor OR, procedures are relatively quicker. They use local anesthetics instead of regional or general anesthetics. And patients can go home after the procedure. They don't have to stay in the hospital. Whereas with major ORs, we have an anesthesiologist who looks after the anesthetic side and procedures tend to be longer and more complex. And patients might be able to go home after the procedure or stay in surgical daycare or post anesthesia care unit. So I got to see a variety of cases and I will break it down into five main categories. Number one, skin lesions. In this category, I saw both skin cancers and benign skin lesions. For skin cancers, I got to see quite a few basal cell carcinomas, squamous cell carcinomas, and melanomas. For benign skin conditions, atypical nevi, which means atypical looking moles, epidermoid cyst, actinic keratosis, sibirate keratosis, and lipomas. Hand surgeries were really interesting. The most common procedure we did in the minor OR setting was trigger fingers. Trigger finger happens when there is an inflammation or thickening of the tendon or tendon sheath. We all have tendons that go to each of our digits. When we curl our fingers, this is called flexion, and when we straighten them, this is called extension. In trigger fingers, when there is thickening or inflammation, it prevents the smooth gliding of the tendon, so the finger kind of gets stuck in this position, and the patient has to manually straighten it out. For treatment of trigger fingers, we try to release the tendon sheath to restore the smooth movement of the fingers again. There is also Dupuytren's contracture, and prior to plastic surgery rotation, Dupuytren's contracture to me seemed like this mythical thing that exists in OSCE setting, which is our clinical exam. Because when we're doing the MSK exam, we have to verbalize what we would look for and what the abnormal findings would be. In this rotation, I saw quite a few cases of Dupuytren's contracture. On our palm, we have something called the palmar fascia. And Dupuytren's contracture happens when the fascia forms nodules or fibrous cords. So the finger gets stuck in one position similar to trigger finger, but it's hard to straighten it out because it's really stiff when the fascia forms nodules and cords. And to me, this was one of the most interesting procedures because in the surgical treatment, you have to open the skin and you have to remove the diseased part. However, there are important blood vessels and nerves that travel in your hand, so you want to avoid those structures when removing diseased parts. So it's kind of like doing hand dissection in an anatomy lab for each procedure. So it's very interesting and there are slight individual differences in the anatomical structures. So that makes it more challenging, but also more interesting. Under the hand surgery category, there's also carpal tunnel release. You might have heard of this term before as it's associated with overuse of our wrists and it can be related to overusing our phones or typing as part of our occupation. But there are many other etiologies like genetic or metabolic causes. Here in this portion, we have the transverse carpal ligament, also known as the flexor retinaculum. And underneath the flexor retinaculum, there are important structures like the median nerve and nine tendons. So there's flexor pollicis longus tendon that goes to the thumb, and there are flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus that go to the four other digits. So if there is inflammation or swelling in the carpal tunnel, it compresses the median nerve, and that's what causes symptoms. Patients typically complain of 
beeping or tinkling when they're sleeping and it wakes them up at night and they have to shake their hand off to relieve the symptoms. So for this, we can do either the open method or endoscopic method. For open, you make an incision here and you open the skin and you visualize the carpal tunnel and put across it to relieve the compression. And the endoscopic method is essentially the same idea, but the entrance point is a little different. So instead of an incision here, you make a small incision where your wrist crease is, and you put the camera or the endoscope, and at the end of the camera, there is a blade that you can engage. So once you're at the end of it, you can engage the blade and cut across it, again, to relieve the compression. The outcomes are pretty much the same for either of the methods, but um, there is a slightly reduced risk of median nerve injury with the open method, but the recovery time is slightly faster with the endoscopic method. I realize that I might be over explaining these conditions, so feel free to skip ahead. I know some of you guys are interested in hearing about these details, so I'll try to make these explanations descriptive but short. And the next category is breast surgeries. I got to see a breast reduction surgery and the procedure is so interesting and it's hard to explain it in words, so I'll try to draw it up for you guys. So I'll just draw one side of the breast. Let's see. Here is the breast and here is the areola and we want to do a breast reduction surgery. In the beginning of the procedure, we mark the lines of incision and it looks something like... We have an incision line that goes around the areola. So the areola will move here and we will move some of the tissues down here. So the first step is called de-epithelialization. So it's essentially removing the epidermis layer in this region. So what's left is the dermis layer. Now we move some of the breast tissue, let's say we're removing breast tissue here. We have to piece things together. So like I said, the areola and nipple moves up here and this edge meets this edge. And this edge comes down to this edge and these two edges come together. So what it looks like in the end is... And then the next category of procedures I saw was wound debridement. And for that, we had a few patients with pressure ulcers. And for that, we removed dead tissues to facilitate new skin growth. So I actually forgot to mention this procedure under the hand surgery category and that was the thumb tendon transfer surgery. So I'll just give you guys a bit of clinical context. So the patient had a wrist fracture and some of the bony pieces damaged the extensor tendon that goes to her thumb, the extensor pollicis longus. So the tendon got shredded and tore so she could no longer extend her thumb like this. I'll draw the next part of the procedure for you guys. We have the thumb extension tendon, but it's broken right here. And there are two tendons that go to the index finger, unlike other digits. There are two of them here. So this one is called the extensor indices for press, and this one is called the extensor digitorum communis. Here is the super interesting part. Because there are two tendons that go to the index finger, we can actually take one of the tendons, this one, and bring it over to the thumb, just like this. So this part gets redirected to the thumb. And now the extensor indices proprius can be used to extend the thumb. And then it takes a bit of time for your brain to readjust to the fact that one of the tendons that usually goes to the index finger is now going to the thumb. But after a period of time, the extension function comes back. However, this patient had a natural anatomical variation, which resulted in her having not two tendons, 
but only one tendon, the extensor indices proprius. After considering a few options, the surgeon decided to use the one tendon and split it in half so that half of it can be redirected to the thumb while the other half stays in the index finger. So it was really interesting how you could improvise and come up with new solutions Long story short, I loved it. I loved how there is a variety of procedures in different parts of the body. And as I illustrated in the tendon transfer example, I really liked the problem solving aspect as well. And there is so much meticulousness and artistry that goes into each procedure. Even something as simple as removing a skin lesion. So you have to consider what the skin will look like afterwards, like the amount of tension or the cosmesis. I think I really made the most of this rotation. I got to suture a lot and I think my skills have definitely improved. And I really enjoyed working with my preceptors, the surgical assists, and the nurses. And I got along with them really well. And that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification if you don't want to miss my new videos. I also have an Instagram channel where I share posts and stories about my day-to-day -day life. So feel free to follow it. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye.